Hi again. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act Two. As we meet the virtual gourmet himself, John Mariani. John, great to see you again. Nice to be back. Hey, John, I have a question for you. Um, uh, I almost got to uh, a town that you wrote about, Wyndham, New York, uh, when I was uh, a, uh, uh, for one summer in Monticello, New York, I was a, a bellhop for a while, but I was a short order cook for most of the summer at Brothers Restaurant, which may or may not still exist. Uh, but we almost took a day trip to uh, Wyndham. So I, I found it kind of interesting that you were talking about it because it's still Monticello's up a bit and Wyndham is beyond that. Uh, how, how do you wind up in Wyndham? Well, there are a couple of reasons why I reported on it. Uh, number one, it is a major uh, ski resort. <clears throat> uh, the Catskill Mountains in New York City, in New York State, which is only two and a half hours from Wyndham. I mean, it's really, there's, there's Hunter Mountain and then there's Wyndham. And uh, those are the two principal of many ski resorts in uh, the uh, in New York State and the United States. Um, it was the equivalent of me reporting on Vail or Aspen or Colorado Springs or any of the ski resorts uh, out west, um, which I have done in the past. So the second reason is that my son bought a house up there, <clears throat> a summer winter house, um, getaway. And uh, so I've been there three or four times in the last six months. And had occasion to appreciate both the uh, town itself, which is very small, and uh, the uh, restaurants that are uh, in its midst. So uh, that's why. Well, hmm. it is a cute town, I have to say. I have not been to Wyndham. I'm pretty familiar with the Catskills, but that's up. Uh, it's pretty far up. It's above Woodstock, which is in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> from my point of view. Um, and I love the article that you wrote because it was not only a tour of the town, um, kind of a travelogue, but it was also reviewed all the great little spots to eat, mm -hmm. um, which I thought was a lot of fun, including, I think, the general store, if, if I got the, I probably got the name wrong. The, gen yeah, the general store, <clears throat> well, Wyndham itself is uh, one main street, which stretches for no more than a mile. And uh, about two thirds of the way down is an old general store of the kind that when I was a little kid, we'd go for summers out on Long Island. And in those days with general stores, but there's just if, if the Smithsonian disappeared, you could rebuild America from American culture, from American uh, general stores. So it has, I mean, it just has everything It has, of course, the. The uh, the Catskills fudge and then the cookies and the tomahawks and all that. So it has a whole kids place, uh, has wonderful New York State cheeses uh, that they have, honeys, uh, all of these type of foodstuffs, which you expect to find. But also attached to it, which is a little bit unusual, is a full scale breakfast, lunch uh, eatery. And um, it's always packed uh, winter and summer. And it's a big family place, and the the food is just wonderful. Um, it is as you would expect: waffles, pancakes, and omelets, uh, hash browns, uh, crisp bacon, um, everything you could get, ask for, uh, grits and oatmeal, and so forth. And it's very, very good fare. And then uh, they move on at, at lunchtime to go sandwiches and uh, hamburgers and stuff. So it's no big deal, except that it's just so exemplary of a genre of food, American food culture that you don't find much of anymore, with the sweetest waitresses in the world, by the way, and uh, also play, place mats of name the, name the states and that sort of thing. It, it's really, really <laughs> lovable that way. Um, and that's what, I mean, they have a, they have, of course, the, again, this is one mile, and they have some restaurants off to the off to the uh, side of the uh, of the town again within one mile, and um, uh, they're all either tavern style, meaning they usually have a big uh, bar. There's an Irish bar there which has uh, some very good corned beef, by the way. Um, it has a, a taverns that have uh, uh, entertainment on the weekends, and um, it has a diner. Uh, the obligatory diner, uh, and it has a grocery store where they make their own 
cheeses and own mozzarellas, fresh cheeses. They have um, Wagyu beef. I mean, this is a little teeny town, but it gets so many tourists who come in and stay for a week or three days or whatever um, uh, who like to cook out. And that was the other reason is that although it is known as a ski resort, which has expanded to a certain degree just in the last year or two from its owners, <clears throat> um, it is also in summer great. There's a beach, uh, Lake Beach. Um, you can, so you can go boating, you can go biking, you can go trekking, you can go bird watching. Um, we actually saw a beer, a uh, beer, <laughs> a lot of beers in the refrigerator, but we actually saw a bear from the porch of my son's house as well as uh, the first day we drove up there, deer on the front lawn. So it's an enchanting place. Um, the fear is, at this point, that the local residents, which I think is about 6,000, which swells um, on the weekends and certainly during the, um, you know, uh, yeah, this swells to, I don't know, 20,000 on the weekends, perhaps. <clears throat> but um, the problem is that there are developers. Oh, it's always the developers, right? The developers think that Wyndham should go more upscale, up market. Now it's a very familial place, um, but they think that they could uh, aspire to be the Aspen of the East. Now, I know Aspen very well, and it's a terrific place in many ways if you happen to have Bogner skis and if you happen to have Johnny Versace uh, pullovers and, uh, and, and eat at restaurants that are charging $48 for you know, three pieces of sushi and you're surrounded by <clears throat> 10, 12, 15 million dollar chalets in the hillsides. And Aspen's been fighting for its own development uh, quite successfully, uh, unlike Vale, which is a disaster at this point, and um, uh, Steamboat Springs and, and others, which are just so overdeveloped. And Eagle, I mean, the first time I went to Eagle, there were like two houses in the mountains, and the next time they're like 20. Uh, so everybody in uh, Wyndham, that hasn't happened yet. So I guess the best way I can put it is, is if you had a childhood, in which you went to, whether it's ski resorts or winter resorts, and you want to go skating and, and tobogganing and that sort of thing. And there was a country store where you used to have um, go in for the house-made candy and the, and the fudge sickles and everything. Uh, Wyndham is your kind of place. And as I said, it's, uh, it's thousands of miles from where you guys sit. But if you do live anywhere in New England or New York or in the middle Atlantic states, so you want to go skiing, it just ain't that far from anywhere. Um, it's exactly two hours from where I live, and it would be two and a half hours if you happen to live in Manhattan. So um, it's uh, it's not one of those out-of-the-way places I discovered. It's, it's, uh, it's very, very popular, but we just don't hope that it becomes, we hope that it just doesn't become Aspen, Colorado, or one of those places. Well, I got to get there fast then. John, yeah, thank yeah. you. Never know. Yeah, well, we can't. We can't leave you. I need to make a correction. Uh, you had your beers or bears, uh, and I had my senior moment. Um, I actually, I was at Monte, Monticello, and I it was a Fountain Loop restaurant. And the reason why it's important for me to correct it in Brooklyn, I I, I was a counterman and, and ran the Brothers restaurant. But up there, it was Fountain Lou. And it's important because. On Friday, July 13th, 1962, that's when I met my wife. Uh, I was a good old man, but I also handled the counter. And she came in and she ordered an egg cream. And 60 some odd years later, we're still going strong. So anyway, whether it's Monticello or Wyndham, upstate New York is a great place for romance as well. People don't know that New York State is as big as it is. Hmm. Oh, and that's let's true. Let's forget about it. Let's just cut. New York City away from it and let it float into the uh, Atlantic if you like. Yeah. But you've got the Hudson Valley, you've got the Finger Lakes, you've got the North Country, you have all of the territory the, the, uh, along the Erie Canal, you have Wyndham, you have Monticello, you have yeah. uh, Roosevelt Homes, you have, and if you keep going all yeah. the way, you've got Niagara Falls. So uh, it, New York is a state of mind. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.